Welcome to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm your host, Shannon Skinner, and I'm joined by Lisa DeLorme, who is the co-founder and CEO of Rent Frog Repeat, a very, very unique company. So you're going to want to hear uh, um, Lisa's uh, success story here. She's based in Toronto, and later in the segment, before we take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute. When I ask my guests for the top tip on living a successful life, you'll hear Lisa. Hello, Lisa. Good morning. Oh, it's great having you here on the show today. Thanks for having me. You look lovely in red. Thanks. Now, this is a special dress. This is a represents your business, of course. It, it does, yes. This is actually a, a dress by Millie, um, and we were excited to have her on board. Uh, she does uh, nice, really brilliant colors. I would make my mother proud of not being, uh, not wearing black today. Um, and she actually um, sells right across the U.S. and Canada, so we're excited to have her as part of Rent Frock Repeat. Now, dresses, of course, are really is a very big topic. Fashion dresses, with Kate Middleton being in, in Canada right now. Yes. Um, you know, the world is obsessed by what she's wearing. What does that actually say? about us? Well, you know, we've been a little bit obsessed with a few women lately. I think, you know, President Obama's wife, Michelle Obama, the First Lady, and Kate Middleton. But I think sometimes it's a little bit of an escape. We want to uh, have that Cinderella moment. I think sometimes we grew up reading stories, and Kate kind of gives us that Cinderella moment, this, you know, commoner that married a prince, and of course now we're caught up with her wardrobe. What do you think she's been representing uh, with her fashion? Uh, what statements is she making? I think she's mindful. I think she knows that the economy, the way it is, and I think the choices that she's been making have been reflecting that. Uh, so you don't see there in these glamorous, you know, thousand dollar gowns. Um, the the um, designers that she's picking are accessible to the, the common woman. Mm -hmm. There was some criticism that she was wearing a gray dress, uh, and some of the media said, well, why are you wearing a boring gray dress? Uh, and uh, I was reading one report uh, believed that she wore it in respect, uh, out of respect for Princess Diana on but it would have been her 50th birthday. Right. So exactly. she took a, st a step back um, in, in, in the limelight by wearing gray out of respect. So I thought that was interesting if it is true. Yes, again, very mindful, yes. Now, your business is very interesting. Mm -hmm. It rents, you rent high-end designer dresses. Right. Um, yes, we, uh, we're, we were very excited about it. I keep saying uh, we don't take uh, credit for the idea itself. My girlfriend and I were sitting at a kitchen table. We were invited to a wedding, and we thought the age-old question of what are you going to wear. And we came across this site in the U.S., a similar business model, and we were really excited. We thought we don't have to spend the money we did before, but we can still look beautiful. And when we looked them up, they actually didn't deliver to Canada. So the, the light bulb went on. We kind of looked at each other and said, we think Canadian women would be as excited about this as we are, and Rent Frock Report, Repeat was born. Now, um, this is a very unusual company. I, I've not heard of a, a company that rents high-end dresses. Bags, maybe. Right. Purses, I've heard of a company that does that, but this, this is unique. Yes. Um, we are the first in Canada to do it on such a grand scale. I know there's a couple of smaller boutiques that have right. done it so, for sort of the local uh, community. Be, but because we're online, we can actually service uh, women re right across Canada. So what's nice is you kind of think of the major cities, but I also think I grew up in Cornwall, Ontario, where we would have to drive to Ottawa or Montreal or a weekend in Toronto to gain access to some of these designers. And now you can have a beautiful dress shipped right to your front door. Well, and of course, uh, I was looking at uh, on your website um, at the designers, and, and people can go to your URL is uh, redfrockrepeat.com. Exactly. That's it? Okay, great. Check it out. Be sure to. Um, but you have great photos of, of the designers. In fact, maybe we can, as we're, we're talking, we can talk about some of these uh, designers. Um, how does it work? So let's say I want to rent a dress from you, right. uh, and you have really nice high-end dresses that right. are five, four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, um, and you rent them out at a discount. Exactly, yeah. So we actually... a gorgeous one. Oh, thank you, that. yes. This is actually Badgley Mishka that we're showing here. Yeah. Uh, very popular. Uh, Rumor Willis is the face now of, right. uh, of Badgley Mishka. Uh, but yes, we have designers that we have from Canada. We like to support our local uh, designers as well. So we have folks like David Dixon. Uh, we also have Pink Tartan, Lovas, an up-and-comer, um, and then things like Badgley Mishka down in the U.S. And we actually rent the dresses for 15 to 20 percent of the retail cost. So we have dresses that you can rent from $50 up to $525 because they retail really for $5,000. Really 
So this has been pretty popular. Um, the special dress, the sequence at the top, feather at the bottom as well. Um, the girl, this really says it's a fun night. I'm not a wallflower. I'm going to go out there and have some fun. So yeah. again, uh, a range of prices exactly. for, for that anyone with any budget. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And so if you have a special event like a day uh, wedding, a summer wedding, uh, we have some choices that are available to you for 50 to $60. But then if you're going to a black tie gala affair, we have things that range two, three, four hundred dollars for rentals as well. So you'll find something for every event. So how does it actually work? Well, what you do is you just log on to the site. We've made it pretty easy. So you can shop at 12 o'clock at night after you've put the kids to bed and you finally have that cup of tea right. to settle down. You go on the site, take a look around, find the dress that you want, um, and you actually choose two sizes. We send a second size for free to ensure fit. We're very descriptive about the size details. Um, and then you uh, just go through the process of telling us what dates you want them. We ta then take care of it from there. We pack it all up beautifully, ship it right to your front door. You get to choose to wear it for four or eight days, depending on your event. Maybe it's a long weekend or a vacation. And then you just throw it into, throw the dresses into a prepaid envelope uh, that we supply, and you drop it into a Canada Post mailbox. It comes back to us, and we take care of dry cleaning. So what happens then if it doesn't fit? Well, so far, so good. We've actually had 100%, and I think that's because people have really taken the time to read through the site. But if, if something were to happen and you had the delivery come to you and it didn't fit, we ask that you have the delivery come two days before your special event. So if your wedding's on Saturday, have the dress come for a Thursday. Try it on. If something doesn't fit, get on the phone with us. We'll actually ask you a few more questions about what was it, what was the fit issue. We know the inventory so well that quickly, overnight, we will ship you a replacement dress. Um, and then, of course, if that still doesn't work um, and we haven't had that situation yet, I'm glad to report, but we will refund you uh, the cost of the rental of the dress. Shipping is the only thing you'd cover at that point. So then, I mean, in terms of you de um, deciding what designers to work with right. and to cover, I mean, how do you decide? It's tough, actually, but it's yeah. a really fun process. So there's a lot of times where we're in our jeans and T-shirts and lugging inventory around, but the fun part of the job is heading down to New York City for Fashion Week, going to the fashion shows, how reading fun. magazines, taking a look, and really looking at things that speak to us. At the end right. of the day, we say it's about quality. We want to make sure that we have designers that are well-known, have a long history, but we're also interested in up-and-coming designers and making sure we look at it and say, you know, is this something we would wear? Is it something my mother would wear? It's actually hard to shop not just for ourselves. Um, so we go through the gamut of things and then we actually go into an Excel spreadsheet. Do we have enough color? Do we have sleeves? No sleeves? Long? Short? We really want to have a variety because we know women are different shapes and sizes and they all enjoy something different. So that process is long but it's a lot of fun. So again, um, your website is rent a frock repeat.com yes. um, so check it out uh, you know why not save some cash instead of buying a dress exactly. rent it and put that money toward a really great pair of shoes or a vacation exactly. right exactly that's the the whole reason we came up with it it's the one piece we have to admit that really doesn't get the return on investment you know we've seen silly amounts for jeans but you know what we wear our jeans over and over again but a dress sometimes and especially with Facebook and all the media and cell phones uh, people are saying now I wear the dress it's up on Facebook it looks like I wear it all the time so now you can actually have some variety in your closet and still not spend what you were spending before on dresses is there anyone famous that's, that's uh, been uh interested in renting from you yet? Well, we've had we actually some TV ago. personalities. Yes, Angie from ET Canada aboard right. something to wear to Michael Buble's wedding. So a beautiful pink Peter Sornan sparkly dress. He actually makes dresses for Michelle Obama. Uh, so she was excited about that. So we've had some local celebrities and uh, um, uh, borrow some, some pieces and rent some pieces for their special events. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Now, we're going to take a quick break. And this means it's my good to know minute. Mm -hmm. And Lisa, I know you've got a great tip for our viewers so you can just jump right in. Okay well I would say I think one of the tips there's many but the one I focus in on is really focusing on your strengths. I think as we grow up we're taught to focus on the things that we don't do well. We look at our report cards, we read through the stuff we do really well fast and then we focus in on the areas of improvement and so I think we're taught at an early age to you know sort of go to our defects and try to raise them up when really if we know what our strengths are we should build on those and continue to build on those and surround ourselves by other people that have different strengths from our own. So I think being open and really being comfortable and saying what is it that I'm good at and really studying that piece and becoming great, fantastic, extraordinary. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. Yeah. That's a great tip.
Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more with Lisa Delorme from Rent Frock Repeat about how to unleash your inner runway. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm your host, Shannon Skinner, and I'm joined by Lisa DeLorme, who's the co-founder and CEO of the company Rent Frock Repeat. Now, some time ago, I mean, you've always had a love for fashion, and you have a background in, in big business. You've worked for uh, some Fortune 500 companies, well-known companies. But somewhere along the line, you, 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 you figured out you, ha you could blend your love of fashion with with your sales experience. Right, exactly. Yeah, I, I started off thinking, you know, I'd work for a big company, sort of work my way up. Business was always intriguing, sales was intriguing. Wow, you know, these sirens, you know, this is the benefit of uh, of being downtown Toronto. There's always something exciting going on, right. isn't there? Very yeah. active, and you gotta flow with it. Gotta yes, flow with exactly. it, that's right. Yeah. So, but you did, you you blended your love of fashion with sales, so beautifully. Yes. Oh, yes. You know, when they say focus on something that you're passionate about, I never thought fashion was something that I could actually do for a living of course during the week I'd work really hard and then on the weekends I'd find a way to spend the money that I actually made during the week had fun shopping my mother is uh, the one that taught me to shop early on and then just a nice girlfriend weekend so I never thought I could do that but then after I had been in in business and with big business for a while I, I saw the business end of it and really started to see that there was an opportunity on the fashion end and that I could marry the two and so I took a package last year after I'd been with a company for about 10 years they were fantastic I love them, but I knew it was time to sort of move on and do something for myself. And you've done it so beautifully. Now, you also had a long career, um, or at least at one point you worked as uh, uh, the president of the Art Institute of Toronto. Yes. I mean, how exciting is that? Yes. And, you know, I had the opportunity as somebody with a business background to run a school filled uh, with I don't, young adults that were so passionate about art. Um, you know, so we had game art and design, fashion design, fashion marketing. So I had access to a lot of these people that were so passionate about what they did and what they designed. And of course, I was still the business side, running the school, making sure that we had uh, students in class, that we had faculty to teach, that we could pay for the rent, all of those things that I was concerned with, but saw what a, what a great benefit when you marry that business side with the passion for, so I had access to that information, had access to teachers that had a background in fashion, um, and then it, it it just started to blend together. Isn't it interesting when you when you look back at your career where you're at today mm -hmm. and you look back and you see all the steps that actually got you to where you are. It all made sense, but maybe not always making sense at the time. Exactly, yeah. You kind of get up in the morning, sometimes you would say, you know, I love what I'm doing, I'm learning a lot, but is this it for the rest of my life? Right. But you still keep chugging, and for some reason, something might happen all of a sudden that you don't expect. I hadn't thought five years ago, it wasn't the plan to start something on my own. It was almost like an opportunity to came. It came in the form of a package from work, and they said, you know, whoever wants to, and people didn't expect that I'd raise my hand, but I thought, Wow, what an opportunity. Here I am, I was hitting two big numbers, 10 years with the company, and I was hitting the big 4-0, and I thought, this is just a sign. I'm actually gonna think about what I wanna do with the rest of my life. And Rent Frock Repeat was born. Now, what has been, for you, the, 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 the biggest challenge in launching this business? I mean, online companies are not necessarily 
easy to make successful right. quickly anyway. Right. Uh, for me personally, I think I'm such an action do person. Um, you know, I get up in the morning and physically want to get things done. But there was a lot of research to be done because fashion wasn't really my background. Business was. I spent a lot of months early on really studying that world. You know, buying three, four months in advance, heading down to fashion week. Um, you know, knowing that inventory would come up three or four months later. So the sort of thing that once you started to study, you understood this. I, I can understand it but I had to be sort of in that learning mode um, and so that was a little bit of a challenge because I hadn't been in a learning mode for a long time. So a steep learning curve. Yes thing. exactly yeah. but it was nice you know it, it happened I really uh, put my nose to the grindstone and did that with my business partner Christy Weber and together we just studied it and said this is something that we could do so it was more personally challenging I think just to sit and really focus and and um, not just get up and say okay what needs to be done today we're in that mode now now that we've launched um, but I would say that's probably been the biggest challenge. Anything else, uh, your last guess, I think perseverance. I don't see anything. When challenges come, I, I look at them as Lisa pause, think the challenge is there for a reason, what do you need to learn from this, and then move on. So my favorite saying is fail forward. And so, you know, anytime we say, hey, maybe we could have made a different decision, we don't look at it and say, oh no, we should have made a different decision. We look at it and say, okay, we learned from that. Now how do we navigate forward? There must have been some fear in launching this and starting something new, not really knowing quite what you're doing yet until you actually do it. Right. How did you get through that? You know, my, my mother gave the analogy, um, you're like birthing a baby. I don't have kids myself, but she said that's exactly, you're going into a territory that a new mom's going into. You know, there's the nine months of preparation, and then all of a sudden the baby's born, and I remember calling her and saying, I haven't slept in days, and we were just so busy. Um, but I think sometimes when you surround yourself by people, my husband is very supportive. I have a business partner that is very supportive, so when she has her days, I pick her up. When I have my days, she picks me up. So as much as the fear is there, I think it also is an indication that we care. And I think sometimes we can look at fear as, what is it that I'm really fearful about? And when you stop and think about it, we said, what's the worst thing that can happen? Am I prepared to live in a bachelor apartment with my husband and my two dogs? And when I could get to that place and say, that would be great, the fear went away and it allowed us to continue to go. So yeah. you released it. Yes. What are your ultimate um, long-term goals for the business? Where do you see it going, your bigger vision? Right. I, I think, you know, one of the things that I've learned through this process, Shannon, is, um, you know, reaching out to other people and really uh, spreading what I've learned to other women. That's why I love your show so much, and I wanted to be a guest on your show. Uh, because I think long-term, my business partner and I say, we hope we give people an opportunity right across Canada to have their Cinderella moment. I have to say, our best days so far have been the email emails we've received, um, things like, I never thought I could wear a dress like this to prom, I couldn't afford it, and now you made this available, or I never thought I could wear a designer. So as much as we're focused on that sort of thing as well, that allowing women to have their night, we're also focused on how can we take this and help other women sort of launch pad their, their dream and their reality. And I think part of it is just sharing the story. So as much as we have growth uh, a focus of growth for our own business, bringing right. different things other than just dresses that people could rent, right, and yeah. we have our five and ten year plan. I think really when we think about what we'll get out of it is when we can help other women sort of start their businesses as well and learn from our experience. So if you want to look like Kate Middleton, you don't have to drop the cash. You can actually rent through okay. Rent a Frock Repeat and save your money and uh, get a new pair of shoes or take a holiday. Yes, exactly. <laughs> or put that cash towards your children's education. Right. We've even right. talked about some people get invited to charity galas, and we say to them, instead of spending the money on the dress, spend a fraction of that, take the money, and, and support the cause that you're going to dinner. So there's a million things you can do with the extra cash that you get out of this. Now again, uh, rentfrockrepeat.com um, is where you can find out more information about Lisa and where you can rent your dress. And uh, Lisa, it's been such a pleasure having you here today. Thanks for having me. And if I could say one thing for our Toronto residents, we have a trunk show that's coming up next week. I know sometimes fit is still the question. So July 13th and 14th, we start at 6 p.m., though you do have to RSVP and you can do that through our site. Uh, but we have a trunk show where people can come down, take a look at the dresses, try them on. And for those that are watching across Canada, we're coming to a city near you soon. Oh, fantastic. A road show. Love yes. it. And I can't wait to try one of your dresses. Fantastic.
Well, for more information about upcoming shows or to contact me, you can visit my website at extraordinarywomentv.com. Thanks for watching. If you are, in, if you are of course, uh, interested in transforming your life, I hope these stories have inspired you. Uh, you've been watching Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I will see you soon.